Uh, it's my, my great pleasure to welcome Livio Liechtu to uh, tell us about the divide knots of maximal genus defect for what is the last seminar of the, of the summer, I believe. Thanks so much for the invitation uh, to close your seminar for, for this summer. Um, and thanks everybody for, for showing up to hear me talk about divide knots of maximal genus defect. The main result I want to talk about is the following. Um, so for every positive integer g, there exists a divide knot kg uh, whose smooth four genus is equal to g and whose topological four genus is equal to one. And actually, these, uh, th there are explicit examples which, uh, which I will present. Um, so you see these, uh, these uh, snails, I didn't put them on the last slide just to hypnotize you. They will actually figure, figure in the talk. So this is just for, for those who, 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 know, uh, who know these words. Um, I will explain all the terms that, that are on this slide. If, if you don't know them yet, then, then here's what you, what you can think about. So there exists these, uh, these class of knots, the divide knots, and they are um, very natural from the standpoint of singularity theory. Um, and these knots, they behave very differently in the, in the smooth and in the topological category. So that's, uh, that's, uh, that's uh, the very vague uh, summary of, of, of the result, but, but we will get the we will get it more precise. Um, yes, that's it. And then, so from this, it follows that the ratio between the topological and the smooth four genus can be arbitrarily close to zero for, for divide knots. So that's a direct corollary. You divide one by G and G is arbitrary. So that's arbitrarily close to zero. Okay, so that was just a very quick summary of, of the results. Here is the plan for my talk. So first, I really want to give some kind of overview of, of, uh, of the results and situate them um, in terms of algebraic knots and uh, generalizations and the four gene genera of, of algebraic knots and these, and these generalizations. Um, and then with, with all, all this uh, background uh, done, I hope to get you interested uh, in uh, divide knots and this will be the second part to discuss uh, divide knots and to, to uh, give some examples and prove the theorem for the first couple of examples and to persuade you, uh, uh, make you believe, <laughs> hopefully, that one can do it for, for this whole infinite uh, family of examples. Very well. So there's one thing I would like to say, which is um, I have uh, fairly little experience with this format. So if, uh, I, I nevertheless uh, hope that it will be pleasant, um, but uh, if, well, feel free to help me at any point by asking questions and interrupt me uh, when, when something is not clear or whether when you would like to have more, more details on something. Okay, everything fine so far? Good, okay, so let's start with, uh, algebraic knots. And um, so everything I'm gonna say on the next uh, couple of slides is a classic from singularity theory that you find, for example, uh, in um, Milner's uh, 68 notes, uh, singular points of complex hypersurfaces. So take any, any polynomial um, in two variables, complex polynomial in two variables, with an isolated singularity at, at the origin. And I'm really not going to develop a, a lot of uh, general theory at all. So you may really just take the following polynomial, namely f of x comma y equals x uh, cubed minus y to the seven. Then um, what one can do is uh, the singularity is isolated and one can take a small sphere around the singularity um, and intersect it with the zero set of this polynomial. So with a, with a plane curve that is defined by this polynomial. And this uh, for, 
for epsilon small enough, if you take the epsilon sphere, is a, is a link of a type that doesn't, doesn't vary if you make epsilon smaller. So that's really a, a classic thing from singularity theory. And what we're gonna do is just assume that, in fact, this intersection is a knot. And in the example that, uh, that we have of our polynomial, x to the three minus y to the seven, uh, this is in fact the three seven torus knot. So that means it's the knot, a knot that you can embed uh, on the on a torus, and is given by winding uh, three times along the torus in the longitudinal sense and seven times in the meridional sense. Okay, so I, I really don't want to uh, go go into into details of this. But so the point is, what I want to make, the point what I want to make is that, that actually this, um, the knot does not depend on the epsilon that you choose. And even more is true if you, if you make the sphere smaller and smaller, um, um, you always have the same type. And additionally, the, in fact, the, the zero set of the polynomial uh, in, the, in the ball, that is in the epsilon ball that is bounded by the epsilon sphere is a cone, is topologically a cone over, over this um, three seven torus knot. So that's a, a structure result for, for, uh, for, this, uh, for this singularity. So what I want to remark about, about this is that because, uh, well, the knot is just a circle and the cone over the circle topologically is just a, a disk. So I want to remark that the zero set of the polynomial, the, the plane curve, um, intersected with the epsilon ball around the singularity is a topologically embedded disk. And it minimizes the genus among all surfaces that are properly embedded in, in this ball and that are bounded by, by, the, by the knot of the singularity. Okay, so that's a... Uh, um, very, very simple uh, consequence because, well, this has a genus zero and you cannot find any surface that has smaller genus than, uh, than zero. Okay, so I made an illustration of this uh, phenomenon. Uh, here it is. So um, the, the sphere uh, that you see, you should think of it as S3. And in S3, there is uh, this 3-7 torus knot or some, some uh, knot of a singularity. And then uh, the, the, the plane curve, uh, the zero set of this polynomial is just a, a cone, uh, topologically a cone over, over this knot. So it kind of uh, shrinks like a cone to, to the singularity, which, which is here. Okay, so now it is a, a very classic uh, theme in singularity theory to, to uh, desingularize the singularity, so to deform the, to perturb the, the, the curve to make it smooth. So what one can do is just take a very small value, uh, z, that is regular for the polynomial, and look at the, at the level set of, of the polynomial. So what happens is that it's a smoothly embedded surface and still bounds the same, same knot. Well, maybe up to, up to isotopy, okay? So that's a kind of a deformation of the singularity that, uh, that makes, makes the plane curve smooth. Now, you can ask, is this, uh, is this surface still still uh, optimal with respect to the genus among all smoothly embedded surfaces uh, bounded by, by this knot, knot K in the, in the three sphere. And amazingly, this is true. So that's the resolution of uh, thumb conjecture by Kronheimer and Rotka that in fact, if you take uh, this, this level set of, of the, let's just, uh, let's just say the, this uh, polynomial that we had before in the examples or, or some other polynomial, then, then this level set minimizes the genus among all surfaces that are properly and smoothly embedded in, in this ball 
and have the, the prescribed boundary k. Okay, and now now comes uh, now comes the, the the combo breaker, which is uh, another a third a third category, um, which is called the, the locally the locally flat one. So if we if we assume the embedding of the surface to be not smooth but only locally flat, which means that that um, that locally the the pair ball comma surface is homeomorphic to r to the pair r4 r2 uh, which is exactly a condition that that rules out this this cone cone phenomenon that uh, that we saw a couple of slides earlier then so if we if we assume a continue a, a topological embedding locally flat one so no coning um, then it's actually possible to reduce the genus of, of a surface um, that is properly embedded um, to five, so by one using. So just to, to remind you here, uh, it, it was a very, um, it was a, a kind of a simplistic picture, but the genus of the surface was correct. It's a genus, a genus six. Um, so here it's possible in this category, it's possible to reduce the genus to five. Uh, using Friedman's celebrated disk theorem. I also have uh, an image for this. Um, it's uh, yeah. So one one uh, one one genus somehow disappears into an iterative uh, construction. That it's uh, hard to hard to see that it's locally flat, mm, but it is okay. So maybe if you only care about polynomials, this is the moment where you decide that this category is not for you. <laughs> but um, from, from the viewpoint of not theory, it, it's, it's, it's really interesting. Okay, so, so that's, that's the very, very, very global, uh, global picture that, that uh, we're looking at the surfaces that are embedded in the four ball. And, um, so on the next slide, I, I want to make, make these notions a bit more precise so that then I can state a couple of uh, precise, precise results. Um, but are there any questions so far? Okay, then I will just continue. So let's, let's make this a bit more uh, precise uh, the the things that I talked about just uh, until now, and let's take k to be any knot in the three sphere. Then we define the smooth four genus as the minimal genus among all surfaces that are embedded in the four ball in a smooth and proper way. The proper just means that the bound the points that lie on the boundary of the four ball are exactly the points on the boundary of the surface. So a surface that is smoothly, properly embedded in the four ball and bounded by, by the knot K. Um, then the topological four genus, we define it uh, completely in the same way, is the minimal genus among all surfaces that are properly embedded in the four ball and bounded by K, but this time we, we uh, want them to be locally flatly uh, embedded. In, in the in the four ball and then the genus defect uh, of the knot which is kind of uh, something that I hope that I showed uh, could could be interesting um, is just the difference between the smooth and the topological four genus of a knot k okay so I've already alluded to the fact that for uh, torus knots uh, with this genus defect is is maybe non-zero so let me give you a couple of precise results about this. So if the two parameters, P and Q of the torus knot are large enough, then the genus defect is always non-zero and it actually also starts, starts to grow. So the, this uh, non-zero result was first observed by Rudolf and then a quantitative uh, um, result was given by Lee and Wyszynski. Then um, recently we, we improved this, uh, this bound on the, on the uh, genus, genus defect 
uh, together with uh, Sebastian, Peter and Lucas. And well, there's been more progress still. There was a Duncan who improved it even more and it's still uh, going on. So what I, what I put here is just the best, best asymptotic result to date, which is that if you let the two parameters, P and Q uh, of the torus knot, uh, go to infinity, then the ratio between the topological four genus and the smooth four genus is bounded from above by 14 divided by 27, which is really close to one half. Okay, so that's, that's kind of the, the best result that exists at the moment. So this is also, also uh, based on, on Duncan's technique. Um, Exactly. So, and, and this, I really want to compare it with, with the following thing. So for all um, co prime PQ, so I just take P and Q co prime to actually get a knot. Uh, uh, so don't worry about it. Um, the ratio between the topological four genus and the smooth four genus is bounded from below by one half. So what these, these things together, that tell us uh, the theorem uh, of Bader, Benfield, and Levark, and, and this remark is that really, really, we should think of, of this ratio as uh, basically one half um, if P and Q are, are large. And so this, there is a, I give the argument for the, for the, for the experts of this remark. So the, the, it goes via the signature invariant of, of knots. So by the Gordon, Lederland, Murasugi signature formula, the signature of the torus dot is bounded from below by the usual uh, genus, uh, ciphered genus of the torus knot, which is just um, the minimal genus among all uh, compact oriented connected surfaces in the three sphere that have the knot as a boundary, which in turn equals the smooth four genus by um, by the result that we, we saw before, by uh, the Tom conjecture uh, proved by Fraunheimer and Rovka. Um, and then there's a lower bound for the topological four genus by, by the signature invariant. This is due to Kaufman and Tyler. So two times the topological four genus is bounded from below by the signature invariant. And if you put uh, these, these two inequalities together, what you get is exactly exactly the remark. So that the ratio between the topological and the smooth four genus is bounded from below by one half. Okay, so that's uh, like there's kind of a, something that we expect for torus knots. Now torus knots um, can be generalized. So first of all, uh, all torus knots uh, arise as knots of, of singularities. Um, algebraic knots, but this class is a bit a bit larger. The class of algebraic knots it uh, consists also of certain iterates of of torus knots. Anyway, all these knots can be generalized by positive braid knots, and a positive braid knot is just something you obtain by um, taking a couple of strands and put any kind of crossings you like. Um, they should be positive. They should all go in the same sense and then closing it up. This way you obtain a positive braid knot. Oh, wait, this is not a knot. It's a link. It has multiple components. But, you know, if there's only one component, what you get is a knot. And more generally, there are positive knots. These are just the knots that admit a diagram with only positive crossings. So if you orient the knot, um, you only see crossings of this, this positive type. So there's this uh, hierarchy. There are torus knots, then algebraic knots, then positive braid knots, and then positive knots. And it's always a, a real, real inclusions. Okay, so we've seen uh, kind of some results for the genus defect of uh, torus knots. So what, what, about, um, what about positive braid knots or positive knots? The result that I want to stress here is that uh, even though it's a generalization, uh, we get that the, the, the ratio between the topological and the smooth four genus cannot be too close to zero. So this is a result uh, due to Feller 
uh, from 18. Uh, and it says that the topological 4 gene is uh, divided by the smooth 4 genus for any positive brain node is bounded from below by 1, one eight. And even for um, positive knots, the, the same is true. So if you, if you take the topological 4 genus and divide by the smooth 4 genus, that's at least 1, one twelfth. So that's a result uh, in joint work with um, Sebastian and Pierre Dörner. So all, all these proofs, it's just uh, giving a lower bound for the signature and then using the Kaufmann-Taylor formula um, to bound the topological four genes from below. Um, yes. So that's uh, it's basically signature results. But also what I, what I would like to mention is that, that this is probably not, not optimal. These bounds are not optimal. And that there's a conjecture by, uh, by Feller um, that, that this should be uh, one half. And I'm not exactly sure if the conjecture should also be for positive knots, but certainly it's uh, stated somewhere for positive braid. So is there an easily stated intuition for why one half is what's to be expected? Uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe, maybe. Well, first of all, it holds for torus knots. That's that's always a always a good uh, good benchmark. And um, um, then there's a good deal of examples that have been calculated, uh, and it never went below. <laughs> um, well. Yeah, that's that's maybe about about uh, as much as I can say for positive knots. I think it's it's really not uh, that clear to me. Okay. Yes, but maybe you should also ask Peter about it. <laughs> Very well. So now we've seen uh, we've seen algebraic knots, we've seen torus knots, we've seen these generalization positive braid knots and positive knots, and now I would like to come back to to the main results again. Uh, which is about divide knots. I have not told you yet what divide knots are, but uh, let's just say there are another generalization of algebraic knots. I will state this uh, in the in the second part of the talk. But the point is that that they behave differently with respect to four-dimensional uh, topology. So so let's have this result again. So for every integer g, there is a divide knot with smooth four genus equal to g and with topological four genus equal to one. In particular, this ratio that, that uh, I was talking about, uh, topological four genus divided by smooth four genus, um, becomes arbitrarily small. So it, it can be arbitrarily close to zero. And this is really, really the, the difference to, to the case of, of torus knots or of positive ray knots or of positive knots um, that, is, that, is, uh, that I find interesting in, in, this, in this context. Okay. Are there any questions so far? Okay, then I hope I, I got you uh, interested at least a bit in uh, learning what divide knots are. So let's, let's just uh, go to the second, second part of the talk, which is uh, divide knots. So here I want to first, first uh, introduce uh, divide knots and make some examples. And then somehow from making examples go directly into considering the examples that are actually interesting in, in the context of the result I want to talk about. Okay, so divide knots were introduced by Acampo in 98. And here's what they are. So let D be the closed unit disk in, in the plane. And at the divide P, uh, P for uh, partage, um, it's the image of a smooth arc um, that is immersed uh, in, in the disk and has the endpoints on the, the boundary um, on the disk. And this, this immersion is assumed to be generic in the sense that all the, all the, all the Self intersections are double points where the tangencies are uh, distinct. So that's the generic, uh, generic part of, of the definition. So it's really just there's a disk and some, some immersed uh, doodle. Now that's, that's fairly far away from a knot yet, but uh, here's, here's how you get a knot from this. So you 
we identify the, the, the tangent bundle to the disk. So the disk is just a unit disk in R2. And well, every tangent space is just a plane. So we identify the tangent bundle with disk cross R2. Um, and in there, so that's kind of a, an R4, but a bit smaller. <laughs> um, we, we consider, we consider the, the unit sphere. So all the, all the, um, all the vectors, x comma v, where x belongs to the unit disk and v belongs to, uh, to R2 uh, that, uh, that have norm one. And uh, that is uh, very clearly by, by definition, that's just uh, S3. Um, and now the point is, uh, well, we have this smooth arc that is immersed in the disk. And what we can do is um, we can lift it, this, uh, this curve to uh, this, this unit sphere in the tangent bundle. So um, what's this? So the knot of a divide is just all the, all the vectors in, in, this, in the unit sphere of the tangent bundle, so in, in the unit sphere of, of D cross R2, um, that are based on, at the point of, of the divide of P and that are tangent um, to, to, to the curve, to, to the divide. Okay. Um, yeah, so let's, let's maybe make uh, examples. So just, just consider the first, the first example for a while. So let's, let's think about what happens at, at some point uh, in the middle. So, so just, let's just take the, the unit disk and the divide given by just uh, a straight arc uh, going through the unit disk. So in an interior point, um, there, there are, if, if, if we lift this to this unit sphere in the tangent bundle, there are exactly two vectors tangent to the curve that together with the point uh, itself have norm one, okay? Um, so for every point in the interior, we just get two points uh, if we lift to this uh, unit sphere in the, in the tangent bundle. Now for every, every point at the boundary, uh, of the unit disk, there is only one vector that combines to norm one because already, already the point at the boundary itself has a norm one. Okay, so there's just a, the, the zero vector that, that we, can, we can have. So what happens is there is one point for every one point of the divide knot for every boundary point of the divide, and then there are two points for, for every interior point, and then there's again one point for, um, for, uh, for the, the boundary point, the second boundary point. Okay, so here's, here's, here's the example. If we, if we do this arc that just traverses the disk, what we get is uh, just the unknot. Um, now, if we, if we make uh, a next example, so we, we have this, uh, this knot here, which is actually the first, first knot in the, in the list of examples I, I want to talk about. Um, we do the same thing. First, we just double, double all the points of the, of the divide arc. Um, and then, then we, are, we are facing uh, trouble because we don't know, uh, well, we have not yet decided what, what, uh, what all these crossings mean. So we, have, we, have, we know that we have two points for every, every point in the interior of the disk, but uh, well, how to make an actual knot diagram out of this. And so the, the resolution of this problem is not, not difficult. It's just uh, somehow the, the height of, of each strand of the knot um, depends on the argument of the, of the tangent, tangent vector. Um, so here, here in the, for the triple knot, for example, you can just say, well, um, uh, the top, somehow the, the top, uh, top level should be argument pi, and then you decrease, you decrease, and then there's argument zero, and then you decrease and decrease, and then there's argument minus pi. And then you identify top, top, and bottom. Um, so if you do this for the trefoil knot, it looks it looks uh, 
well for this for this uh, for this kink it uh, produces the trefoil knot um, so here's here's what I just said. There's actually a, a, an algorithm to draw a diagram by uh, Hirasawa. Um, so you can think of this unit sphere in the tangent bundle as a cylinder with identifications. And the high, so so the the base of the cylinder is really just a unit disk, and the height is given by the the argument of the tangent vector. And then there is the cylinder, and well, actually because the argument is a uh, periodic modulo 2 pi, then somehow you have to identify top and bottom. And this is why you have to here, if you, for example, um, cut the cylinder at argument pi minus pi, um, you have to somehow modify the strands a bit um, where, where the argument passes from pi to minus pi. Okay, well, for from pi plus pi minus epsilon to minus pi plus plus epsilon, something like that. Okay, so what what happens is just a strand passes it along uh, around every other strand. Um, that's that's what this uh, this line means. Okay, but I, actually, I don't I don't really want to go too much too much into into the details of of this. So the point is really um, there's there's a uh, but there's the divide, some curve in the, in the unit disk, and there's a straightforward procedure to produce the link. Um, and that's really, for example, how you get this unknot example, this trefoil knot, trefoil knot example, and so on. Okay, so next, I would like to uh, present some, some properties of, of divide knots. But um, first of all, are there any questions for, for the example? Very good. So um, let's go. Let's go to the properties of divide knots. Um, so first of all, what I already told you is that divide knots they generalize algebraic knots. What this means is, well, just every knot that arises as the intersection of a plane curve, sing isolated plane curve singularity with a small sphere, it also appears as a as a divide knot. And the point is really that um, that uh, a singularity you can deform it so that the real picture is um, well, it's a divide with a, the, the the real the projection to the to the real plane of the curve is a is a is a divide, and you see the maximum number of of uh, so the, the the number, the number of double points of divide, the divide becomes the maximum number of ordinary double points of the algebraic curve. So there's really this, uh, you can, um, yeah, but I, I, I don't want to, I don't want, want to spend a lot of time on this. So it's, it's, it's another generalization of algebraic knots. And um, they are fibered. Uh, it just means that the complement of such a knot has a structure of a of a surface bundle over S one. Um, they can be drawn algorithmically together with a fiber surface. So before I was just talking about the diagram for the link, but actually you can also you can also just draw a fiber surface. It's a bit more complicated, but not much so. Um, divides have. Uh, double points just by uh, by construction and the number of double points exactly gives the, the cipher genus so the the uh, just a normal genus of a knot the um the genus of of the fiber surface um then they are strongly quasi positive and um uh, ishikawa in o2 gave an explicit construction of, uh, of the fiber surface as a plumbing of positive hot bands. Uh, this in particular implies that, that uh, the knots are strongly quasi-positive. Then they uh, satisfy uh, equality between the, the genus and the smooth four genus. This just follows from uh, the Tom conjecture that I mentioned earlier and um, Rudolph's extension to strongly quasi-positive knots of equality between genus and the smooth four genus. Um, I think if I'm not mistaken, this, ex this extension due to Rudolph 
was uh, proved in, in this very seminar a couple of weeks ago by uh, Lucas. And another point is the signature is strictly positive if the divide knot is, is not trivial. So this, this is a couple, uh, these are a couple of, uh, of uh, properties that, that I find very interesting for divide knots. And uh, one, one interesting point is that, that all these properties are shared um, with positive break knots. So in this, in this sense, it's really, it's really kind of a similar, a similar class. And well, both, both classes belong to the class of fibered and strongly quasi-positive knots. So that's basically the main, uh, the main, um, main thing. Okay, so these these are um, important properties of divides. So what I what I want to do next is uh, go back at at the sequence uh, of knots. And so the the first first knot of the sequence was just a trefoil knot. We've seen it already, and then have a look at the second the second one. But um, first, uh, are there any questions about these properties? Okay. Um, yes. So let's let's go back to the to the to the knots. So the first, the first knot in the sequence, it was really just this, the divide was just uh, one, one kink. And we saw that this was the trefoil and this uh, has topological for genus equal to one uh, by, by the signature uh, invariant and it has smooth for genus equal to one. So there's really nothing, nothing to prove there. But now let's, let's take the, the second knot of the list of examples. Um, and apply the algorithm of, of Hirazawa. And luckily, this is what Hirazawa did in, in the paper. Um, so I, I, just, I just copy uh, the image from, from his article. Uh, so so one thing to mention is I, I, didn't, I didn't draw the divide in exactly the same way. So one thing to mention is that, well, if you isotope the, the divide through uh, generically immersed arcs, then this isotopy just lifts to the three sphere. Um, and so, so it, it doesn't really matter uh, uh, how you draw the divide up to generic isotopy. So what we get from this is that the second knot of our, of our uh, family is the knot 10, 145. I said that one can also get a, a fiber surface uh, algorithmically, and this picture is also found in Hirazawa's article. Um, so you see, it's also the, you can guess that it's also a, a simple algorithmic procedure, uh, starting from from the divide, then somehow making uh, making a band for every strand, and then uh, adjusting at at points where there's uh, clashes. So we we will just accept this. And now this, this is a surface of, of genus two. It is a genus minimizing surface for the link 10, 145. Um, so we will take this surface as a starting point to try to show that the topological for genus is uh, equal to one. Because let's, uh, let's recall uh, the, the, the statement of the theorem is that, that I want to talk, that I'm talking about is that, well, it has a topological for genus equal to one, okay? Um, because it's the, well, yeah, that's just the same. Okay. So here for our convenience, I, I redrew the surface, this fiber surface uh, with a bit more space uh, so that it can accommodate a couple of simple closed curves, namely these two curves here. So there's one red curve and one blue curve, and they are simple closed curves on the surface, and they intersect exactly once. Okay, now what one can do is um, calculate these uh, couple of linking numbers 
So um, calculate the linking number of alpha with alpha sharp. Um, this just means, so alpha sharp means that you take the curve alpha and push it off the, the surface very slightly in the, in the positive direction. So here, for example, we can just uh, say that that the black side of the surface is the positive side. And so we just slightly, slightly push it off in this, this direction and then calculate the number of times these two curves um, link. So what we get here, and this is really a calculation that I, I cannot, I cannot uh, do live here with you. What we get is that the linking number of alpha with, a, with itself pushed off the surface is zero. Um, I cannot make a calculation with you, but I can prove that I did it, uh, did it myself. So <laughs> this, uh, this is uh, not to really convince you, but to convince you that I, that, that I did it uh, diligently um, and, and get zero. And then we can calculate the linking number of beta with a alpha pushed off the surface, uh, there we get zero. We can calculate the linking number of alpha with beta pushed off the surface, we get one. So this zero and the one, they really kind of follow from the fact that there's one intersection of the curve alpha and beta, and then do the same for a beta, and there we get one. Okay, so that, that was a, uh, kind of preparation to, to now give the, the argument um, why there's a um, torus with one boundary component locally flatly embedded in the four ball with, with this knot as a boundary. Okay, so let's proceed. Let's proceed to this, to this argument. So consider, consider the union of the curves alpha and beta. Um, and take a regular neighborhood of, of these two curves. So we've just seen it's simple closed curves that intersect once. So if we take a regular neighborhood of this uh, union of these two curves, it's just a, a torus with one boundary component. And well, we can just look at, at this boundary knot of, of the torus, it's a knot and Actually, the, this, this regular neighborhood of the curves alpha and beta is a ciphered surface for this knot um, by, by, by construction. Um, so also by construction, the curves alpha and beta, they represent a basis of the first homology of this regular neighborhood. So we can calculate the ciphered matrix uh, for, the, for this boundary knot um, by, by these linking numbers. And these are exactly the linking numbers that that uh, we have calculated before. So what we get is that the knot that is defined as the boundary of the regular neighborhood of the union of alpha and beta, the two curves that I described on the surface, uh, the ciphered matrix for this is just uh, 0, 1, 0, 1. Okay. And then from this, we can calculate the Alexander polynomial. Um, which by definition is just a determinant of square root of t times the ciphered matrix minus uh, t uh, one over square root of t times a ciphered matrix transpose. So I don't, I, I spare you the, the definitions of all of this, but it's, it's really, uh, these are by, by kind of, well, it's one definition of the Alexander polynomial, but uh, it's really by definition. And if we calculate this uh, determinant, what we get is one. So, what this means is uh, by, by uh, Friedman's uh, disk theorem, um, this means that, that the knot K, which is the boundary of this uh, regular neighborhood N, it bounds a locally flat disk uh, D in the, in the four ball. So to, to get a, 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 a torus with one boundary component that is locally flatly embedded in the four ball, um, and that is bounded by, by our knot 10, 145. What we can do is just cut out this, uh, this, um, this regular neighborhood N and re-glue the locally flat disk D in the four ball um, that, um, that uh, is bounded by, by, uh, by, this, uh, by this boundary, boundary knot K. Okay, so like this, we, we get a, 
a locally flatly embedded torus in the four ball with one boundary component and this boundary component is exactly our knot. So this uh, gives the result that the topological four genus of, of this second knot from the list is equal to one. Okay, is that, uh, is that fine or are there any questions about this? Okay, so let's uh, go on and just sketch the proof for the general result. So here's the sequence. The first, uh, just uh, to remind you, this is the trefoil knot that we had. This is the knot 10, 145, and then it just it goes on. What we have seen is that the smooth four genus is always equal to the number of double points, uh, which is just uh, G. If, uh, if here we have, um, K1, K2, K3, K4, etc. And we know that the topological four genus is always uh, at least uh, the signature divided by two by Kaufman Taylor's formula. And this is uh, at least one because there was this one property that I said that um, signature of a non trivial divide is uh, not zero. So the only thing that we have to show is that the topological four genus is at, at most one. And this, we, we really do it in very much the same way as, as we did it for, uh, for the K2 example, the example just before. Um, it's just that, well, there's this uh, slightly more algebraic way of, of uh, calculating everything given a ciphered, ciphered matrix for, for the knot itself. Um, but yeah, so I, I don't really, I don't really, I, I cannot present uh, this calculation uh, like this, but I give you the, the main, the main, uh, the, the main technical result that's necessary to, to, um, to, to get get uh, get this uh, genus bound. So let sigma be the fiber surface for uh, this the gth knot of the sequence. It can be just constructed um, uh, by by uh, by some algorithm, and then also the a, a ciphered matrix for this uh, for this fiber surface can be described fairly easily. So then there exists a subgroup of rank 2G minus um, 2, so that if the matrix of the ciphered form is restricted to this subgroup, um, uh, which is, we call this A, then calculate this determinant and we get plus minus one. Um, so it's really kind of a Alexander polynomial for a restricted, restricted uh, ciphered form restricted to something. So, what we did in our example, we had G equals to two. So we found a subgroup of rank two for which uh, this restriction matrix was uh, had, had kind of uh, this determinant equal to two plus one. But um, what I'm telling you is that it also works uh, if, you, if you enlarge the sequence and just kind of reduce the pattern of the curve we looked at and also do it in kind of these outer, outer layers of, of the snail. So that's really a kind of a tedious calculation, but not that complicated actually. So it's really the curves don't, like they don't grow uh, huge in homology or whatever. It's really just a fairly, fairly simple curves. But I can't, I can't draw them, I can't draw them for you. And then there's this uh, second ingredient, which just says that if, if you have such a subgroup, um, then actually this, this reduces the topological four genus by uh, the rank of the subgroup divided by two. So um, that's a criterion we, we uh, used for, uh, for the genus defect of torus knots. And it says that, well, you have this uh, um, ciphered surface and a subgroup so that exactly this matrix restricted to the subgroup has a determinant plus minus one then the topological four genus is bounded from above by the genus of the surface minus the rank of the subgroup divided by two. So what we get uh, if we apply this to, to our first result, so we have the fiber surface, it is of genus G, we find the subgroup of rank two G minus two. So we dis distract, this <laughs> we, we, we um, yes, so we have G minus uh, G minus one. So what we left is that the four genus is bounded from below by, from above, from above by one. 
um, and this and this uh, so this finishes the proof of the theorem. Unsurprisingly, this uh, this proposition is based on uh, Friedman's Friedman's disk disk theorem. Okay, so this is a kind of kind of uh, yeah, just just how it goes, and um, yeah, so the calculation is is in uh, my paper. Are there any questions about about the proof? Okay, so I have uh, one question to um, to finish uh, the talk, which is uh, let's talk again shortly about the corollary that uh, we get, namely that um, for for strongly quasi-positive knots, the ratio, so qu strongly quasi-positive fiber knots, the ratio between the topological and the smooth four genus can be arbitrarily close to zero. Um, yeah, so I guess my question is, uh, can, it, can it actually be zero? So is there a non-trivial uh, strongly quasi-positive fiber knot that is uh, topologically sliced? Um, yeah, so one comment is maybe that among fiber knots, the strongly quasi-positive ones are exactly the ones for which uh, the cipher genus equals the smooth uh, four genus. So you might expect that also in the topological category, they at least have some decency and uh, be not slice. But um, yeah, as far as I know, this is really not uh, this is uh, not answered yet. So uh, a second comment is that this question really becomes trivial if you do not ask for fiberness, because uh, there's a result from Rudolf who says that um, every Alexander polynomial is realized by a strongly quasi-positive knot. So in particular, uh, there are strongly quasi-positive knots with Alexander polynomial one, and then you can apply Friedman's disk theorem so to have a slice slice knots and also every knot is concordant to a strongly quasi positive one this is a recent result due to a uh, water chicken so if you if you drop fiberness it's really this question is uh, um, answered uh, multiple times already um, but uh, if you if you add fiberness then for example the alexander polynomial really is not trivial and you cannot uh, you cannot just apply apply for them. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe 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 there is an easy answer to the question, but I I don't have it ready. Um, okay. So that was it. Thank you so much for your attention. Okay. Uh, thanks, Livia. Are there any any questions? So, uh, is there any particularly easy way to sort of get a handle on the signature for a divide knot from the from the diagram? Um, yeah. So one one problem is so so what you can do is you can just um, uh, describe the ciphered form uh, starting from a diagram. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's really about so so there's there's one the 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 fiber surface can be built in a way so that there's a, a particularly simple basis for the first homology, which is uh, there's one curve for each bounded region of the divide, so each region not not touching the boundary of the disk. So there's one curve here, one curve there, uh, one curve here. And there's one curve for every double point. And then the ciphered matrix is really, uh, you can describe it by saying, well, uh, the linking number of two curves is something like the number of uh, times the two regions are adjacent. Um, so like this, you can describe uh, or also for the double points. And then, well, you, you, have, to, you have to think a bit to see, well, in, what happens if you push one curve off the surface? What happens if you push the other curve off the surface? 
Um, but yeah, this can be done. So, so there's this fairly easy way to describe the sacred matrix. And um, from this, you can calculate the signature, of course. Um, the other thing is that uh, with this, you won't be able to give a lower bound for the signature uh, for any kind of divide. Um, simply because there is none. <laughs> yeah. um, the I'm fact that all, that all these examples have topological gene, four genes is equal to one, uh, implies that they all have signature equal to two. So you won't get any, any uh, growing signature bound, uh, signature bound growing genes. Yeah. I did have one eye on Peter's conjecture. That was, I guess, the, the motivation for that question. Okay, uh, well, if there are no other questions, then I guess we, we thank Livio uh, virtually again for his talk. And, uh, thank you.